Well, hello everyone and welcome back. This is the Knife Doctor channel. I'm the Knife Doctor. I know it's been a while, but we finally got something new in and we're going to take a look at it. Let's go. <laughs> So, this is a knife that I've actually really been looking forward to for a long time, and I don't know why it's taking me so long to get one. And it's a weird knife to be this excited about, but if you guys saw the thumbnail, you know this is an Openel number no. 8 in carbon steel. And the reason I've wanted one of these for so long is I had the uh, privilege of sharpening one for somebody, and uh, it was impressive how good of an edge it took. To me and it was carbon steel so i wanted the carbon steel version and let's look at that box there that's pretty i'll get it down in the light it's pretty nice packaging nice little uh i think it's genuine leather but i'll be able to tell you when i get it out openel is made in france it's a french company i am quite fond of a lot of french things so this was a no-brainer for me Gonna just pop this seal real quick and carefully. There we go. And let's let's get this thing in hand. Just put that aside for now. Oh, that's so cool. Wow. Alright, so yeah. Sorry guys. I took my coffee pot to work, so the lighting situation here is not as good as it once was. Let's see if I can just Oh yeah, that'll do it. Oh, perfect. So she's nice and dirty. Got some oil on her. Not a very good clean edge. I can already feel a, uh, what you call a burr or a wire edge formed over here, but that's not a big deal. I'll be able to take that out real quick. One of my skills is obviously sharpening, so we can close this. Uh, blade centering is nice. Savoy, France, open now. Rotate the locking collar and, oh yeah, that's good and solid. It's got a nice feel to it. Nice thin blade, excellent for slicing. Uh, another reason I'm excited about this carbon version is, I can't wait to see how well it patinas, but uh, this is pretty much just gonna be the opening portion of the video I'm gonna Stop the camera here in a few minutes when I get done talking. We're going to do some more fun stuff with this. One of the things I've wanted to do with this ever since I sharpened that first one is we're going to answer the question that no one has asked but me. Uh, can you use an Open L number 8 as a straight razor? I think you can. And I'm going to find out. We knocked over the wooden guy earlier. Put him back. So I'm going to try that. I'm going to put a wicked edge on it and... Uh, I shave with it. And by wicked edge, I don't mean I'm going to use a wicked edge sharpening system. I mean the edge is going to be wicked. I uh, don't use one of those. Nothing against them. I've just never used one. All right, let's take a look at this little leather contraption. It does appear to be genuine leather, as advertised. So, I'll take this insert out. I don't need that anymore. Let's see how well the Number eight fits in there. Oh, quite nicely. A little bit of head spacing out there. You can just pull that up or down or however you like it. Nice little genuine leather lanyard and looks like a two inch belt loop. Not bad. Stitching's good. Nice. Love the Open L logo on the button. Good attention to detail there. This is uh, quite a fun little knife, honestly. I mean, let's be honest, guys, this is not what you would typically see in my videos because this is more utilitarian than anything else. I mean, this is not a tactical knife. Let's get that out of the way right now. It's not tactical. It's not really even self-defense capable unless you have time to slide this locking collar over in the process of defending yourself because if you don't, the first time you stab the blade's probably going to close on your fingers, and you and the bad guy are going to have a pretty bad day. But 
if you did get a chance to block it, I mean, you could definitely do some damage with it. There's no doubt about that. It's very thin, very sharp, and the bowl, sharpenable blade with a pretty fine point on it. Carbon, very nice. Very, very nice little knife. Let's see what else comes in this little box here. Oh, we got the box, this little, this little Opnel card thing, and that's about it. So that's all you get is this nice little wooden box with a plexiglass cover, the knife, and the wooden sheath. Now, this is not standard. I specifically bought this one with a darker stained finish and the leather sheath. Uh, and for those of you who are interested, this was $35 on Amazon as of last week. So, all right. Uh, that'll be enough for now. I think that's plenty. And I will probably do some shaving tomorrow. I just got off work, so I don't have quite the beard I need to have in order to shave for you guys to really see it. We'll see if that works. Uh, if not, we might do some kitchen prep stuff with this. A little bit of cord cutting. I'm just very curious. I've, I've always wanted to, to do some of this kind of stuff with one of these, but I never really have had one to do it with. But now I do, because I bought one. And I am... <sighs> For a guy whose favorite knife is Spyderco Manix 2, I'm way too excited about this. Also, by the way, this, even all this together, weighs probably less than half of what this weighs. This is just a nice little nifty, I don't know what you'd do with this. Maybe hang it on a, a lanyard or something or clip it to your backpack but I could totally see myself putting this on a belt loop and just carrying this thing around just because of when I do sharpen it up, how just blisteringly razor sharp this will be. And it'll hold the edge pretty well because it's high carbon steel, I don't know. We'll test that, we'll test its edge retention, but I'm relatively certain I can get a very good edge on this that will hold decently well. But uh, that's all for now. See you guys in the next bit. All right, so for this portion of the video, this is going to be the can you shave with it portion of the video. I'm just going to get a little bit of shaving cream on my face on this side <clears throat> and see if I can get it to shave my face. Now, sharpening this thing, this time for this kind of sharpening, I sharpened it a little differently. I used a pole stroke method so that it would draw the edge out more. I stropped it afterwards, so it's not like a normal utility edge that would be far less likely to be effective on facial shaving. So I put a, basically what I could consider to be a shaving edge on it from all the research I've done trying to get my straight edge sharp. But that comes down to I just don't have the right tools, but, but maybe we'll give it a shot with this. So different sharpening methods. I will sharpen it differently when it is time to do utilitarians testing with it because this edge is not going to hold up. Alright. Feels about like my straight razor does. Alright, so I don't know if you guys can see. Oh, the camera's over here. Okay. <clears throat> so you see, there's definitely hair in the shaving cream. Right there, and I believe I wipe off my face. Yeah, there's where I shaved. There's normal. There's shaved. Now, obviously, this is not 
perfect because it's not a straight razor or any kind of razor for that matter but uh, you can do it and I think if you put a little bit more time into the edge you could probably do it where it doesn't pull and hurt so much but uh, I'd say that was successful I'm gonna finish shaving the rest of my face now all right guys now we're gonna do the cutting portion of this and I have collected some paracord cardboard paper for a cut test and a little piece of two by four just simple little stuff that you would expect this thing to do I'm also carrying it I don't know if you can see it from that angle in this little leather pouch that they give you well you know they don't give it to you I had to pick this model and pouch combo specifically so let's do a cut test as you can see it's extremely sharp very 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 sharp I'm pretty sure there is no number of loops I could set up with this paracord to make it not cut them. In fact, we're going to test that theory. And draw it up tight. All six. Yeah, you could just cut paracord all day long with this thing. In fact, let's try. No, it didn't quite work. Eh, it's too floppy. Let's get most of the way through it. Does it cut cutting board style? Yeah. Cuts cutting board style. Alright. So let's mess up some cardboard here. Now uh, I suppose you guys are probably wondering why I don't do this with all my knife videos. Well, quite frankly, most of the other knives, you're pretty much expecting them to do this. This is a $35 knife, and it's only 35 bucks because I bought the sheet with it. Without the sheet, it's significantly cheaper. So, let's get some wood in there. pretty good. It's pretty solid smooth cuts for all the crap I just did. All right guys so there it is. This is a day later by the way everything that happened post the very first part of this video happens a whole day later. Um, so some final thoughts on this little knife. Uh, extremely happy with it. I'm glad I bought it. It's very cool, very fun. It's not a, you know it's not a super tactical knife but it's a utilitarian knife that does exactly what you want it to do. It, it cuts things very well, very smoothly, very cleanly. Um, so thoughts on the knife. First of all, uh, this loop, you are not going to be able to lubricate it. Don't even try because as soon as you do, the lube will seep, seep into the wood and make it swell. And then the blade is a lot harder to open and close, which is what I did like an idiot, knowing full well that that was probably going to happen. And uh, note to self, oil doesn't evaporate as quickly as water does, so it's going to be a little bit swollen for a while. But at this point today, it's a day later, it feels a lot better than it did yesterday, but not as good as it did out of the box. So not a problem with the knife. That was my own stupidity that caused that to happen. Um, some thoughts on the knife. It's very interesting how it's made. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get an angle on it that you could see. Okay, yeah, right there see that marking there right there so fun fact for you guys before I was doing the job I'm doing now I used to work in a fabrication shop and that is how I know that that means that these blades are punched out of a flat sheet of steel I've operated a punch before and it leaves very distinct marks around the edges where it punches out the shape and that is what those marks look like uh, undoubtedly I have no doubt that they punch these out of a sheet of steel does that bother me? No. It's a very cheap knife, and the finishing process is done very well. 
The only thing you really want to watch out for when you're punching things out of steel is micro fracturing in the blade or in the product. Little micro fractures along the edge, but it doesn't seem to be a problem here. They've been doing this for since 1890, so I think they've got it down pat. So no issues with that. It is a relatively inexpensive knife. I'm not going to say cheap knife because it's doesn't feel cheap. It doesn't look cheap. It just doesn't cost very much. Made in France. Love that. So, yes. No complaints about the knife. Works well. Lock works. If you deploy it and put the lock on, it's a very solid knife. I felt very secure in my hand. Wasn't worried about it at all. With regards to the sheath, um, I like it. I like it a lot. It's very nice, genuine hand-stitched. Well, it's not hand-stitched. I seriously doubt it's hand-stitched. If it's hand-stitched, I'll be impressed. Um, but genuine leather, it's very nice. Um, you could definitely tell when you put this blade in here, with it, when you put this knife in here, that it was designed to fit at least two size models. You know, maybe it wasn't. Maybe this is just how they do things in Openel in France, but I would highly suspect this was designed to fit a model that's at least another half inch longer as well probably the number nine or maybe even up to the number 10 which makes sense why designs you know uh what do they have like 12 or 18 or 12 or 15 different models why design 12 or 15 different things when you can you know culminate some of them together uh i do still love this open l marking on the button it's gorgeous so like it no complaints about it. If your belt is not the full two inches, this will go up and down when you pull it out, not a big deal. This little flipper thing here prevents you from being able to do one of these maneuvers to pull it out. You have to kind of do a side pinch type of, type of dealio to get it out, not a big deal. But when you carry um, sheath things aft of the side belt loop, it tends to be a awkward reach around situation um that's where i carry my leatherman at work so that's where i put this i've been carrying it i carried it all the rest of the day yesterday after i got i got around one o'clock so i have had some time with it um and that's about it oh to with regards to the face shaving thing so i got it razor sharp um uh, put it put a decent edge on it and it cut the hair off my face now could i have gotten it sharpener sharper Yes, I could have. Uh, it did pull a little bit, but it became very clear to me that it would be very possible to put a better edge on this with proper razor sharpening tools um, and shaved, and it would have felt, you know, wonderful. But with the tools I had at hand, I got it to shave my face, so that's pretty cool. Um, I don't think I've done that with any of my other knives, mostly because of blade geometry. That's one of the main reasons I wanted to do it with this one, because I know how thin... This blade is at the edge, and I thought this would be a great knife to test that on. So, it does work. You can do it. You could shave your face with an Open L number 8, or probably any of the Open Ls, except for the blunt or serrated ones. So, yeah. And, uh, there you go. Uh, next week, we're going to be doing another... Well, I don't want to say next week, because I don't know exactly when it's going to come in the mail. But, I do have another knife coming in. And uh, we're going to do a video on that. It's going to be a little different. Different from this. It's going to be back on par with more like what we're used to here. But I've always wanted one of these. I really wanted to check one out. And I thought I had some really cool ideas of things I wanted to try to do with this. And I thought, well, it's not my normal cup of tea. But I might as well make a video on it. Put it on the channel. See what people think. But yeah, uh, honestly, I can't recommend it enough. For what you're paying for it, this is a extremely useful tool. I'm calling it a tool. It's not a weapon by any stretch of the imagination unless you are premeditatedly hiding around a corner with the blade already locked. It's certainly not a defensive weapon. It could be a murder weapon, but not a defensive weapon. Not that I'm endorsing people who want to use this for murder. I'm saying that's about the only application it'd be really good in. Um, but don't, obviously don't murder people. That's bad. So, yeah, I think it's a very utilitarian blade. It, it works very well, what you're paying for, what you're getting. Um, it feels pretty good in the hand. 
I mean, it's solid wood handle. How could it not? And uh, yeah, I mean, if you don't need something super flashy, this is perfect. If you don't need something super, super durable, this is a surprisingly a durable construction, even though it's anchored in directly into wood. Um, so yeah, this is not going to be a super hard use knife. This is going to be a moderate to light use knife for farm work, camping, gardening even, um, and just your everyday carry stuff. I mean, you, let's be honest, how much hard work do you do with your everyday carry knife if you're not like everyday carrying on a ranch or something? But even on a ranch, this would be a nice little one to keep on you just to keep it really super sharp and then you got your beat up knife. You know, this would be the one you use for sharp stuff. Because as I've proven, you can get this razor sharp. So yeah, I think this is a great knife. And uh, if you want one, I think you should buy one. I think there's absolutely nothing that should stop you from buying this knife, especially not the price point. It was super cheap. This was 35 bucks and it came in all this, came with all this. And you just saw me cut the crap out of a two by four with it and then perfectly slice a piece of paper, which it will still do right now, by the way. If you get a good angle on it. Ooh la la. So, yeah, if you like it, if, you th if it's something you're interested in, I highly recommend you buy it. It's a great knife. It's a great, fun little knife, and I'm very happy I bought it. I'm going to carry it for the next uh, probably a couple of weeks, maybe a month or two, carry it at work, carry it at home, and see if I can't get that edge to start patinaing because it is a carbon steel, and carbon steel will patina over time, and I'm very much so looking forward to that. I think it'll give it a nice weathered look, but... I'm enjoying the satin finish while I've got it, so there's that. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. Come again next week. I know, I know it's been a long time. I've been, like I said, this is my hobby. I have a full-time job. I'm not expecting this to turn into anything super anytime soon, so when I don't have the knives or the time, I just don't get around to it, and I apologize for that. I know some of you guys are watching, you know, sort of consistently. And I do appreciate your patience with me, but it is what it is. It comes when it comes. And when I get the knives, I do videos. I have some knives left over from my collection that I haven't done videos on. But the main thing with that is I bought a lot of these a long time ago. Not a lot of them are new or relevant anymore. And people just don't care. Like if I post something about this Endura, like there's a billion videos on an Endura. No one... There's nothing new that I could say about this other than I like it because it's a spider go. Like, there's not much I could do about it. I don't know. Maybe we'll do a video on this. Whoopsie. It's a AKC double action out the front automatic knife. AKC is Italian, and you know how I also have a slight affinity for Italian knives. But anyone who's watched the video this far, first person to comment and saying they want a video on this, I'll make a video on it. I can do that. But yeah, I'm going to wrap this up, probably cut some of this out, and uh, I will see you guys next week or so with a new knife that I'm actually really excited about by a designer that I've always admired, and I've really been trying to get my hand on one of his knives for a long time, but they're all very expensive. So thank you, Savivi. That's right, Savivi. All right, see you guys later.